Hi everyone, I'm Sang from Playtap. I'm here to introduce you guys to what we're trying to build as a business and sort of some of the lessons along the way that we've learned while developing the games and operating the blockchain games that we have in service. So we, all, the core team of our company comes from two very distinct backgrounds. So we have over 15 to 20 years of decades of experience of, in the traditional gaming space with companies such as NCSoft, Netmarble, who are one of the leading companies in the gaming space in Korea. Uh, also, another unique industry experience that we have is from um, our CTO and myself, we are one of the founders of Itembay, which is the largest game item trading service in Korea. So these experiences and these insights, uh, we would like to bring into the blockchain space and provide a better environment for everybody to enjoy. So what we see as a landscape of the current situation in traditional gaming is that gamers, from the gamers' perspective, everything is fragmented into territories, different countries, different service platforms, and different environments. So there is no physically meaningful methods of transferring any form of value in between countries or in between gamers. We want to fix this through the blockchain technology and our PlayDap service where we will have a layer of interoperable games. We already have two up and running in service and also have very deeply integrated marketplace um, functionalities that can be supplied straight from the gaming environment. And also, on top of that marketplace and the game contents, um, we want to provide a tournament system where uh, your efforts into the gaming, your skills, can be actually used to let and leverage to compete with other gamers and receive rewards in that sense. So I mentioned the three layers. Um, I think the text is a little bit black. It shouldn't be. So basically, um, we have a layer of interoperable gaming content. So we are in operation of two games so far, Cryptodoza and Dozover. So anything you've actually gathered from the first game, Cryptodoza, it is immediately recognized in the second game, Dozover. So as soon as you log in, all your collectibles from the first game would immediately give you advantages within the second game, such as stats, unique skill sets, and unique aspects that you could actually leverage off from. And what we feel about the blockchain and the cryptocurrency environment is that we want to provide the option to gamers where they can spend any forms of cash or any forms of money or any forms of crypto within the pockets. So to a long-term perspective, we want to adopt as many of the um, smart contract and NFT enabling blockchains um, out of the market. And as a main business, we want to provide that marketplace and all the, also the PvP tournament system on top of the gaming contents. So how have we done so far? Um, we, are, we are maintaining one of the top positions within any of the DAP rating sites. But one of the things that I want to mention here is that we haven't hardly done any marketing for our second game, Dozer Bird. Um, all of our core gaming group from the first game, Crypto Dozer, have naturally moved on to the second game and are playing it on a daily basis since both games are giving out beneficial artifacts or beneficial NFTs that will benefit them in each of these games. So this is some of the core mechanics that we have in operation. So uh, starting from Crypto Dozer, any collectibles or dolls or anything of value that you've collected within the first game, it is naturally recognized as soon as you log into the second game and it will give you immediate boost in your gameplay advantages. So such as uh, more skill stats, more, more buffs, more skill sets that you could actually leverage. And while playing the second game, you could get fragments of keys that you could actually collect, combine, and then take back to the first game, which will um, enable you to open more loot boxes and more benefits in that sense. Any surplus of goods or anything other, you know, any collectibles that you may need, it could be facilitated within the marketplace that will be deeply embedded in the gaming experience. So what we do want to move on from here is um, we want to invite traditional game developers and proven game contests from Apple App Store and Google Store into the blockchain space. So this will hopefully enable a lot of non-crypto users into this space as you may all know, this uh, in the blockchain market itself in terms of volume and traffic and usage is quite nascent. In the, uh, so basically we want to invite very proven gamers who enjoy that game contents and provide the blockchain version of that game so people will be naturally moving on to experiencing what blockchain is about and what the NFT technology can be benefit them in that sense. So let me give you 
very simple lessons that we actually learned along the way. So a lot of the DAP developers or DAP gaming service providers are foregoing this stage, but what we feel in terms of developing, developers expecting how the gamers should behave or how they will behave is very widely mismatched. So there's a big misconception that you expect what your gamers will do. You expect how they will behave within your gaming environment, but they never do. So basically, every single major AAA gaming developer and publishers are going through a very variety of stages of focus group testing, closed beta tests, and open beta tests. And this is what we've been doing for all of our titles so far. And we've learned several critical um, aspects that we need to improve upon even before launch. So I implore all the developers here that, to try and even in the simplest form, gather some of the customer base to your office, see how they're playing, examine what they're having difficulties in, and try and improve upon those before launch. Uh, this is another thing that's quite common in the DAP gaming space, is that you need to purchase something even before you can actually take a look at the game. Uh, I mean, personally, this isn't acceptable. It's, it's like saying, you go out to a shoe store and you want to buy a pair of sneakers, but before you can even enter the store, you would have to pay for that sneakers. I mean, that's not acceptable in any, any common sense. So basically, you want to invite the gamers into your game, get them to play the game, engage in the game, and then incentivize them to actually purchase some of the gaming items in microtransaction, in pre-sales or whatever. You need to be able to experience the game firsthand before any gamer or any consumer can make that purchasing decision. Um, another thing about the blockchain environment is that the terminology, even the word NFT itself, is very alien to your common gamer. To a non-crypto audience, um, the leftmost chart is one of the data that we actually gathered from our first focus group test was, out of the 40 people that we invited to the testing, Nobody, within the two hour testing period, nobody was able to make a MetaMask account, let alone bind that to the game. Um, well, to be honest, we, we sort of thought this doesn't make any business decision, you know, make business sense to operate in this environment. But after various amounts of tweaking, making things comfortable, easing what the terminologies are, making things in simple forms that, you know, simple wordings that anybody can understand, we were able to improve upon that figure by over 50% during the testings. And throughout the testings, um, you have to optimize your UI and UX. So basically, put tags and logging on every single element of your web service or your gaming aspects, and try and figure out what people are finding difficult, what people are finding frequent usage, and what people are not using at all. And you need to put priorities on what you should place in front of the customers. Another major blocker that we feel uh, will we come across is the gas fee and the concept of gas fees in itself. So basically, what we ended up doing as a substitute was actually introducing PayPal, which is very common on a global scale. So basically, you don't need any form of cryptocurrency or ether to play our games or purchase anything from the game. You could just use your PayPal account, your Razor Gold account, and just use your purchasing method that you're very familiar with. This is. Uh, this has boosted a lot of our initial transactions for newcomers to the platform. And also, I mentioned MetaMask before, but it is a very developer-focused tool. Um, you have to install Google extensions. You have to figure out what this terminology means. You have to figure out what mnemonic means, and et cetera. But there are more elegant solutions, such as Portis Wallet, where you can make an account through your email and password. And you could actually use the wallet to purchase small amounts of Ether on ramp while actually playing the game at the same time. And it's very important to actually try and figure out as best as much as possible how to optimize the service. So gaming is a service as a whole. It's not about releasing a package game or video game and just hoping that will do well. It needs to be optimized on a constant basis. So basically, as soon as you launch the game, it's day one of the operation. So you need to ask a lot of non vague more specific questions, such as, for example, um, it's not really helpful to sort of question your service in terms of a lot of our customers are not onboarding. They're not, they're not aggregating. They're not coming onto the service. But you need to sort of put markers on where they are churning out, where they are leaving. For example, 
5% um, of the people are leaving at the latest screen, which is, you, know, you have to figure out if this is a compatibility issue, is, if it's a technical issue, if there's other reasons, you have to figure these out. And people are leaving at level one. They haven't even looked at the game. They haven't tried the game, but they are leaving. Why are they leaving? You have to want to try and figure these out and answer these questions. So improving upon these small figures, that would drastically increase your retention rate on a daily basis. Um, for example, and also as a simple example, even if you're doing an email blast to, as for Christmas, for example, you're sending out a lot of emails to a lot of your customer base. But there again, you can do simple maneuvers such as do A-B testing on the titles. So email blast, get your gifts, for example. You could also do get your gifts and for Christmas packages. And this would, this would change the open rate of these email messages. It could change the behavioral patterns of your customer base. So this is something that anybody can look into. It doesn't cost anything, but it is a very important factor in how you operate on a daily basis. And gaming, as I mentioned before, is a service that you have to continuously monitor. And through some of these activities, we were able to increase our retention rate for our customer base, as you can see on the DAPRADAR report. So where are we heading from here? So, sorry. Oh. So we are going to build up an open marketplace, which will be launched within the first quarter. And it will be very tightly embedded and um, usable through the gaming experience. And also, we'll be providing the tournament layer where people have ground, ground the game. The people have invested time into the game. They've leveled up and they've skilled up within the game. So it's natural for them to compete with other gamers and get rewarded in that sense of their time and effort into the gaming experience. We also um, featured on the Galaxy S10 series above and the mobile wallet into Samsung devices. One of the rationales behind partnering with partners such as Samsung and Kakao and Line is that we need all the help we can get and reaching out to these blockchain major uh, global players is a form of expansion that we are trying to target for now. So in conclusion, we are focusing on creating that interoperable gaming layer, the marketplace and also the tournament system, which will be packaging the play that app um, gaming service. And hopefully our partners help us reach out to broader audience. Thank you. Hey.